Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your off-season edition of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for Monday, April 30th, 2018. Tomorrow begins the month of May, and so we finish up a month of uh, Southern Oscillation Index, or SOI, tracking. And look at what's happened. It's kind of fallen off a cliff, and that means something. We'll talk about that as I move through today's update. We are almost to the point where this will become the hurricane outlook and discussion. We will drop the off-season part of that moniker, and that begins on May the 15th when the Eastern Pacific hurricane season begins. Uh, I'll talk about more uh, about that coming up soon. So April's value, four. So we lost about half of what we had in March, and you can see what's been going on here. A steady decline in the Southern Oscillation Index as the base state of the Pacific changes, the El Nino Southern Oscillation phenomenon and the SOI, they're all related to each other. And this overall dip, if this was the stock market, this would be a very bad signature. <laughs> and so there are implications to this. So let's take a look at that. This is the sea surface temperature anomalies chart for today. And we notice a couple of things here in the equatorial region through here moderating continuing the la nina fading out still some colder anomalies trying to hang on in the extreme eastern pacific uh, some very cold anomalies but those are going to fade away probably and this is all warming through here nothing rapid we're not headed towards a major el nino or anything like that but a warming pacific overall with a generally cooling atlantic and you can really see that signature here especially in the eastern and northeastern part of the Atlantic, the thermohaline circulation, a fancy way of talking about how the ocean's conveyor belt works. This year is a lot different than last year. Let's just put it that way. And so let me just show you the comparison. Almost, you know, it's about three days apart. April 27th last year, April 30th this year. You know, you don't need me to tell you about the changes. You can see those yourself. This season or this year, we still have a ways to go, a month. Uh, but the warmth, what little of it there is, is in the subtropics instead of focused down here in the deep tropics. And that matters because if you have rising air in the subtropics, it's going to sink and dry. We call that subsidence down here in the deep tropics. That's one aspect of it. And then the cooler uh, sea surface temperatures relative to average through here, duh, the, that does not support upward motion or low-level energy for tropical waves to develop. There's a couple of ways to look at it. If the tropical waves, let's change this color scheme here to blue. If the tropical waves do not develop out here uh, and they are robust, first of all, let's assume that they are robust. They come off Africa, they don't develop here, and they spring to life farther to the west, that could be very problematic. Um, so we'll have to wait and see about that, and then it'll depend on how warm this area is and how much upward motion and energy is being transferred out of the deep tropics of the Pacific across the Caribbean and deep tropics of the Atlantic. See, it's very complicated. You can't just say, oh, well, we have cooler sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic and a warming Pacific, and so the Atlantic season won't be very busy etc. Well, it may not be very busy overall in terms of the numbers, but if you're going to have five, six, seven hurricanes form, and most of them form over here, this is just an example, that could be a big problem, okay? If they're not forming east and then curving out to sea, like 2010, so many of them were way out here, and very, you know, no hurricanes hit the U.S. that year. My, my point is, this is a very complex setup. Last year with this, once we started seeing, and there was the first evidence of it right there, that little ribbon uh, that was showing up, that became uh, the La Nina eventually. Last year, I think, was a lot more obvious. We just weren't sure because it had been almost 12 years since we saw a hyperactive season uh, to that extent, or you know, maybe a little less than 12 years. 2010 was pretty active, but point being, this signature screams very busy season that was last year this year not so much but 
things can change. Okay, we still have a ways to go. I'm just pointing out what we have now. Uh, also related to all this, the Nino 3 index or the 3.4 index, and I like this. This is uh, I got this from Ben Knoll, Ben Knoll Weather. He's down in New Zealand. Man, I'd love to go there one day. This is the region that he's talking about, right through here. I love it that it's painted on a map for me, so you can understand where this is. Uh, and what we're seeing here is this steady rise in this overall signature of this region uh, coming out of La Nina, creeping towards neutral. And you can see, obviously, we are nowhere near El Nino thresholds. We have a ways to go, but the trend has been a gradual, very gradual upward trend, okay? Looking at the subsurface, I don't know if this has been updated since the last time I showed you. It will be by next Monday, but let's take a look at it anyway. <clears throat> uh, change this back to black. All right, so this is interesting to me. There's really not much more uh, heat coming in, you know, subsurface warm pool being regenerated to the west still very deep the most positive anomalies and so even if you know this tries to surface it's just not going to be a very strong El Nino uh, if we get one at all and if we do it'll probably be in the fall uh, this is interesting to track though you can see still very cold anomalies at depth and then up to the surface right off the coast of South America and that stuff matters where the heat is concentrated where these warm pools set up at the surface will matter and we'll talk more and more about that the closer to June 1st that we get and even some on May 15th the start of the Eastern Pacific season um, all, all El Ninos or really all warm events are not created equal and we'll need to talk about that in more detail because I want you to understand you're going to hear a lot about seasonal forecasts and sea surface temperatures and anomalies and what that may or may not mean and unfortunately unless you have a very strong signal like we did last year uh, right there in my opinion sometimes it's really hard to figure out so that we can we can try to do it together sounds like fun right so this is interesting I wanted to show you this um, this is from Philippe I do not know how to pronounce the last name so I won't try uh, either Papen or Papen uh, but man I would just be so embarrassed to get it wrong Sorry if I got it wrong. Um, a lot of this is hard to explain from a meteorological perspective, so let's just scroll down because this part is where Philippe kind of explains it where we can all understand it, that this configuration is not one that supports an active season in the Atlantic. And I just showed you that for the most part on this particular chart, but it's getting picked up by other people, obviously, and not the only one seeing it. And you know, if we look at the graphic here, um, this is from Levi's site, Tropical Tidbits. And yeah, it's pretty cold across the main development region through here with your warmer anomalies in the subtropics and farther to the west. So homegrown development, things like that. I'm getting ahead of myself. We still have a month to go, but do not. My, my one warning is don't look at this and say, oh, we're all safe from the hurricane season. We would probably not see anything close to last year's ACE numbers or impacts, but again, if you get these tropical waves coming off and they don't develop out here, but they start to spring to life in this area, you have a whole lot of trouble headed your way. The alternate scenario is like 2013, I guess and other years where they really just don't develop at all to speak of, that is also possible, but I doubt it. Okay, we'll just wait and see. But these are just things to watch. And if we look at this, you can see the graphical version of it, down, 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 the MDR temperatures below normal. They were above for just a little bit, but now a steady decline. And so that tells me we need to watch the western part. One more time to reiterate it over here they're not going to necessarily come from the east I don't want to say they're not because then they might right you just never know so these will be things that we get to watch alright and we'll be doing so practically daily starting in about two weeks not in this much detail but you'll see 
So shifting out of the tropics a little bit here to the lower 48 weather, um, some high fire danger issues here, and then we're going to set up for some severe weather in this area. I'll show you that in a moment. The rest of the United States free and clear of any major storm systems for the time being. That being said, here are the convective outlooks from the Storm Prediction Center, and you can see it's going to be pretty active all up here through Tornado Alley, although a pretty slender area kind of looks like a snake or something the day two outlook is a little bit more concentrated and a little bit more enhanced literally here in the nation's midsection so this is the time of year you know this if you live out there where you have to really be prepared by being alert that is your best line of defense is being aware being alert and then the day three outlook is even more widespread right in the heart of Tornado Alley, probably going to be literally thousands of storm chasers out there. No thank you. If there was just a few dozen, I would probably want to get into it more. I've got a couple of ideas that I would like to try in Tornado Alley, but we'll talk about that another day. It's more, you know, I would need the funding to be able to do it, and it would be pretty awesome, I think, but that's a story for another day. Uh, it would not involve chasing anything, let me tell you. Uh, just think about the remote cams that I've got and what we could do with those in Tornado Alley. And I'll leave it at that. Maybe next year. So, real quick, you guys down and gals in the Virgin Islands, oh, let's use a better color just to highlight it better, down here, all right? Watch what happens over the next few days as I put this into motion from tropicaltidbits.com. All those greens in there really start to fill in as some energy comes in. A lot of rainfall, perhaps, for Puerto Rico, portions of the Virgin Islands, and maybe portions of the Dominican Republic and Hispaniola as a whole over the next few days. We'll pause it, go back, kind of show you where that starts. Uh, looks like about three to four days out. All right, so days three and four. Yeah, my friends down in St. Bart, you know, uh, man, most of the Leeward Islands, and the northern Leewards, Puerto Rico,